Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And we're here taking another look at the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus's camera, putting it up against the iPhone X. This is yet another chapter in the age-old debate of Android versus iOS. And in this case, we're going to take a look at some of the specifications, and you're going to see all of the photos, including the 100 crops, as they happen right after the original photo, and you can enjoy that here or in the galleries that are found at androidauthority.com. Now, clearly the Samsung Galaxy S9 has some great enhancements in its hardware, with multi-frame processing thanks to the RAM built into the camera module, that secondary lens on the Plus model, and in the main lens you have a dual aperture mode that actually gives it f1.5 and f2.4 apertures. In comparison, the iPhone X has a dual lens setup at 12 megapixels each, and the main lens has f1.8 aperture with the other telephoto lens having f2.4. The front-facing camera is a 7 megapixel shooter at f2.2 aperture. Now while you're taking a look at some of these photos, and of course, head into the comment sections down below and sound off on what you think about these particular photos, but in this case we're taking a look at auto shots, it's just straight from the camera, and we're going to compare those photos and give a little bit of a commentary on them. Right off the bat, you might notice that the iPhone X kind of underexposes its photos compared to the S9. The S9 kind of overexposes, especially in low light situations, because it's trying to compensate for the amount of light that's available in the scene. Those are shots that you're going to see a little bit later, but that bit of overexposure also means that it is able to eke out more detail in the darker areas of a scene. The iPhone X simply is not really able to render really great dynamic range, and what that means is that the colors seem a little bit duller and details start to get lost the darker the elements are in the frame. Now, credit where credit is due, the iPhone X's photo might look a little bit more dramatic or striking, but that's not really how the scene actually looked in real life. Depending on what you're really looking for, the iPhone X might provide more dramatic results, and some people do like that, where there's more contrast and there's definitely more saturation in the iPhone photos. However, that's at the expense of a balanced exposure, which the Galaxy S9 does a better job of capturing on a consistent basis. It does a better job of taking detail out of the shadowy parts of an image while the iPhone X keeps them dark and might even add some darkness to them because it's trying to keep a bit of a dramatic feel. Or maybe on the other hand, the iPhone X is just not as good at measuring light properly, and its dynamic range suffers because of it. There were some instances when the iPhone X was able to make a better photo with its HDR and expose the very dark scene and provide a little bit more that you're able to actually look at. But with more things seen in the photo, you could also see that there's plenty more noise. Now, taking a lot of the facets that we've mentioned before about the iPhone X, about its saturation and its higher contrast, and apply it to their portrait modes. Now, in this case, you might be able to just take your pick between the two photos and realize that they both do a pretty good job. The iPhone X renders a artistically blurred background pretty well with the cutout being mostly all right, even though there's a lot of hair blending in with the tree in the background. But if you look at the color reproduction, especially when you consider that this is supposed to be a good looking portrait, then the iPhone X might be able to eke out just a little bit of a step forward. And like we said before, some people just enjoy more drama out of their photos, which is what the iPhone X provides, rather than the overexposed and trying too hard photo that came out of the Galaxy S9 Plus. And that over softening effect seems to show up in selfies too. It's generally a problem with the front facing camera of the Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus that it's trying to soften skin and maybe that's just something that they tuned into that camera because people want to have softer details in their photos. Now clearly there are times when the iPhone X provides a better looking photo, but those situations were far and few between in our comparison. Especially in low light shots, the Galaxy S9 just blew the pants off of the iPhone X. Now there is one more thing we will talk about, and that is emojis. Just a brief overview, the N emojis are not really built into the camera app themselves, so it's not technically a camera feature, but it uses the face tracking on the front camera in messaging apps so that you can move your head around and be one of many different characters, and the tracking is pretty good. It is technically a feature of the camera, even if it's not in the camera app. On the other hand, you have the AR emojis of the Galaxy S9, which are part of the camera app, and you can create a digital avatar of yourself, create facial expressions, and record videos and take photos as your digital avatar. It's probably a no-brainer here that the N emojis tend to be a lot smoother compared to the AR emojis, which are plenty buggier, uh, but really that's going to be something that's up to you, and if you get one phone over the other based upon this, maybe the N emojis are going to end up being a bit more fun for you. 
But so there you have it, the Galaxy S9 versus the iPhone 10. It's pretty clear which one is the winner here. And even if you think that here at an Android website uh, that we would always pick the Galaxy S9 in this kind of comparison, well, the thing is that the iPhone 10 was able to provide some better photos in a few situations, but it was far and few between. And we'll give the iPhone 10 credit for that and its emojis. But overall, the S9 is definitely the clear winner here. So make sure you keep it tuned to Android Authority's YouTube channel and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell over on the side so that you can get notified as to when we put up videos, which we do all the time, and then stick around for more because we are your source for all things Android.